All right, we're going to go ahead and get started on my presentation. If you weren't able to finish the blue sheet, um, we will give you time at the end to finish that up. We did get the PowerPoint going up here in the front, so feel free to follow along um, on the PowerPoint in front of you, or you can follow along up here with me as fine, too. Okay, graduation requirements. Each of you will be required to earn 22 credits overall in order to graduate from Minusburg. Within those 22 credits, you're going to have certain class requirements that you must meet. It's likely that if you are in jeopardy of not meeting these credits, these credit requirements that you've already met with your counselor this school year. You will also have to meet the Ohio State testing requirements in order to graduate from NHS. Now, with COVID-19, there have been some changes to the Ohio State testing protocols, and the counselors will be working with you individually if you are in jeopardy of not meeting those requirements. So we'll be calling, down, calling you down to our office and going over the options with you. If you are hoping to earn an honors diploma, it's likely that you spoke with your counselor about that during scheduling uh, last spring. But if you'd still like more information on that, or if you're wondering, you know, do, can I still earn an honors diploma, you can find more information on that in our program of studies, pages 9 and 10. And you can access the link to that program of studies on our Minesburg High School website on the home page. There's a link to it on the right side. Uh, and all fees must be paid in full as well in order to graduate. All right, I'm going to direct everyone to take a look at the transcript uh, that, they, that you have in front of you. Your transcript is a culmination of everything that you've done over your high school career here at MHS, including all of the courses that you've taken and the grades that you've received in those courses. There will be uh, multiple times throughout this school year when you will need to have um, to submit your transcript. Maybe you're applying for a job. Uh, maybe you're enlisting in the military. You might be applying to a two-year or four-year college. So this document is going to be extremely important this school year um, for all three of those areas. And we're going to go through your transcript piece by piece. Um, but before we do that, just take a look at it and make sure that all the information looks correct and you don't see that anything is missing. On the right side of your transcript, you're going to find a box that says total credits. And what that, what that is, is um, it's a breakdown of the credits you've earned by year uh, as a student in high school. In the bottom right hand side, you're going to see your total number of credits that you've earned while at MHS. Now keep in mind you have to get to that 22 overall in order to graduate. On that right side of your transcript, you're also going to find the end of course assessment box. Look at that one for me. That is going to be the scores you've received so far in your Ohio State testing. Now, it's likely that many of you might have been scheduled to take the government end of course exam last spring, which we know did not happen. Or if you were going to take any end of course exam last spring, that did not occur. Um, and you won't see those courses on your transcript, but your counselor is working right now to get those scores added to your transcript so that they reflect your accurate Ohio State tests. You will also find on your transcript your ACT scores broken down by subject area as well as your composite score. And if you have participated in any AP classes, you will also find your scores to your AP exams on your transcript as well. Okay, post-graduation, what are your options? 
it's really important to start thinking about now what you plan on doing when you leave MHS next spring. Um, maybe you are considering seeking full-time employment when you leave high school. Maybe you are considering doing some on-the-job training or, um, or taking part in an apprenticeship. Maybe you're thinking about joining a technical program. Just last spring, the counselors took a tour of a, a welding school right here in Dayton. And it's a nine-month program where students can learn a specific trade or skill and then enter the workforce after that time. Maybe you're considering doing something like that. You might be thinking about applying to a two-year or four-year college or university. Maybe you are considering enlisting in the military in which case it's important to start thinking about now. Okay, what branch do I think I would be a good fit for? What, what job or role would I like to have in the military? If you are, are at all considering enlisting in the military, I would highly recommend for you to sign up to take the ASVAB test with us here at MHS on Wednesday, November 4th at 7.30 a.m. This test does not commit you to anything in terms of the military. But it is the test that they use to judge the skills that you have. And they take your test results and see what would be a good role for you in the military. Again, it does not commit you to anything. Um, and it's just a good test to take if you are considering at all joining the military. And you'll be able to sign up in the counselor's office for that test. Okay, ACT and SAT. With the current health crisis that we are in, many schools in the area um, locally are moving to test optional, which means they are gonna give you the option of whether or not you would like your ACT or SAT scores considered for admission to a college or university. It is really important that you guys do your research when looking at these institutions. Because every college is handling this differently, and even within those colleges, the programs may be different. So, for example, you may be applying to UC, and UC may be test optional. But if you're applying to be admitted directly into the engineering program, they may require that you submit your ACT scores, or SAT. So it's very important that you research each institution and each program that you would like to apply for to see if you need to submit your ACT or SAT scores for consideration for admission. Also, one important thing to think about with whether or not you're going to let the college review your scores is scholarships. There are schools, and they're all handling it differently, that may not require you to submit your ACT or SAT for scholarship consideration. There are some that may require you to. So it's very important that you just do your research, look at each of the schools that you would like to apply to, and make the best decision um, for you based off the information that you collect. Okay, registering for the ACT or SAT. Um, all of you should have taken the ACT with us last spring. Uh, if you would like to take the test again to try and improve your score, you will have to register on your own at ACT.org. A couple important pieces of information that you'll have to know when registering for the ACT is our school code, which is up here and is also on the printed out PowerPoint in front of you. And you'll also need to know your ACT ID. Hopefully all of you kept your scores um, that you received last spring from ACT when you took the test. On your score report, you will find your ACT ID, which you will need if you're going to register to take it again. Um, if you can't locate those scores, just let your counselor know and we'll try to help you the best we can. Again, you'll register on ACT.org. The fee is $55 without writing. It is 70 with writing. And again, just do your research on the college or institution that you're going to be applying to because many schools do not require students to do writing. So just look at the program in school and
and see if that's something that you need to do. But again, many schools don't require you to do so. SAT subject tests. Some very highly selective schools require their students to take SAT subject tests for, for admission. Uh, these are going to be your Ivy League schools. These are going to be your Harvards and your Yales. They may require you to take these subject tests if you are applying to any Ivy League school. So just keep that in mind. And if you have questions, talk to your counselor. Okay, college visits. Um, you know, tip, in a typical school year, you guys would be able to be able to sign up online and go to a college and visit campus and meet with an admissions counselor. Due to COVID-19, that's going to look a little bit different this year. Some schools are offering virtual visits that you can sign up on their school website. Some schools are offering very small limited number of spots for in-person on-campus visits. So again, look into the college or university that you're looking to visit and um, they will have more information on how you can check out their campus. I would recommend that if you are going to sign up for an in-person visit on a college campus, I would do that uh, soon. Those spots are going to be very limited and people are going to sign up quickly. So. I would encourage you, if you're thinking about doing that, I would do that um, soon. Also, in a typical school year, we have admissions counselors from different colleges in the area who come to the high school and they're able to speak to you about their university and talk to you about what their admissions process is like. Unfortunately, again, due to COVID-19, a lot of those admissions representatives aren't able to come into our building. However, I'm working very closely with all of those admissions representatives, and they are sending me pre-recorded admissions presentations that we will post to our guidance newsletter. So please pay attention to the guidance newsletter. There will be presentations that you can watch on local schools, and it's just another resource for you um, to get information to help you make the best decision for you. You will be allowed three absences for college visits with paper documentation, and this is the college visit form that you can pick up in the counselor's office. What you will do is you will um, have your counselor sign it. You will have each of your teachers sign it so they know you'll be absent that day. And then you will turn it into Mrs. Harvell and student services. Uh, and when you do that, she will give you a piece of paper that you will need to be, that you will need to have signed when you go to your college visit, when you return that, your absence will be counted like a field trip day. And you will get three of those this year for any in-person visits. Okay, holistic review process. This is what the colleges are telling us they are looking at when they look at your application. And what does that mean? It simply means that they are looking at every piece of information that you submit to them and that no one piece is more important than the other. What are they going to be looking at? Uh, your grades and the depth of the rigor of classes you took on your, on your transcript. They're going to be looking at, did you take AP courses? Did you take any honors or college prep courses? Essentially, how difficult were the courses that you took in high school? And again, every college is different, so they'll be looking for different standards on that. Your ACT and SAT scores, if you choose to allow them to be considered for admission. Remember, those are test optional this year for a lot of schools. Your class rank and GPA, your essay uh, that you submit to them in your application, teacher recommendations. We strongly encourage you to ask a teacher uh, for a letter of recommendation who is going to be able to speak to your ability in the classroom. If you are a student who is going to um, pursue a career in science, then a science teacher who can speak to your academic abilities is going to be the best person to write you a letter of recommendation. Keep that in mind when you are going to be choosing your letter writers. 
Um, they're going to look at your extracurricular activities. A lot of the information that you put on the blue sheet this morning, leadership positions, volunteer opportunities, um, all of those things will be considered. We have a lot of students apply to St. Clair every year. You can do the paper or the online application, and there is no application fee at St. Clair. Um, you will be required to take the Acting Placer test for placement in English and the Alex test for placement in math. And you can, uh, typically, you can take those on St. Clair's campus. I don't know right now with um, the health crisis, what they're doing. I know they've moved to some online um, testing options, so you may be able to look into that as well. And also, Sinclair is one of the few colleges in the area that does not require you to submit a transcript unless you're going to be a student in the Allied Health program. Okay, and I think I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Reisner. Good morning, guys. I just want to mirror what Mr. Uh, Meyer said. It's so nice to see you guys back here, and we're so happy you're back. Even if we can only see one third of your faces, we're happy to see them. And you can't tell by the way it's not even so. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the college application process. I know that we have um, fielded questions already from you. I know you have lots of questions about that. Some of you um, may have started that process already. Um, and this will help some of you who may have not started. Um, so college applications are done online, and you can do that by going to the website of the school and looking at what their application process is. We will talk a little bit um, on the next slide about what the common application is, um, but all things are submitted online um, at this time. There are no paper applications typically to any schools any longer. Um, if you are, I want to mirror what Mr. Um, Meyer said earlier. If you are submitting your ACT score um, for consideration, you must do that directly to the school. So you have to log into your ACT account and you have to send those scores to the school. Now, remember this. I know that that week before we shut down back in March is when we took that ACT test. Um, but many of you, when you signed up to take that ACT, we did that um, during our academic periods, I believe. Many of you designated four schools. You could designate up to four schools to send to. So you could have, if you did that, sent those already. But if you have not, and you're looking at a school that you weren't considering then, just make sure that you do um, share those ACT scores if you want them considered. And remember, they said that's for scholarships. Um, Many of them are wanting to see that score possibly still, and for certain particular programs that have um, have a higher um, competition rate. Example would be the nursing programs at some schools, things like that. So, um, and there's others in addition to that. Um, remember to know your deadlines, and that's going to be true throughout this year. Uh, the counselors, unfortunately, aren't aware of every single deadline of every single school. So that is the responsibility of you as a student. So um, if you have an application deadline of December 1st, um, you can't be turning in things for us to submit for you for transcripts on the 30th of November. So you need to give your counselor some time. Um, we'll talk a little bit in a second about how to request transcripts and those types of things. but. The key here um, with the application process is going to be knowing those deadlines and getting things in earlier. It's always better to err on that. Um, and also, when we talk a little bit about scholarships in a second, the same will, will ring true also with knowing the deadlines. Um, we recommend having things done prior to Thanksgiving break. And when we say that, not the Monday before, but maybe that week before, letting your counselor know, hey, I'm done. I need submitted and going through that transcript um, request form, those types of things. But also to remember, some schools may have deadlines prior to that. So just keep a close eye on that as you move through um, the year. If we are going to send a transcript for you, it is a $2 fee to send that. So 
That is only apply if we have to send a transcript, um, physical transcript out. On the common application, I'm saying that correct, right? Yeah. Paper yeah. copy Yeah, for paper copies only um, will we require the $2 fee. And you can sign up on the school council request form, which we'll talk about in a second, and then come down and see us and pay for your transcript. If we are doing a common application, which is submitted electronically, you do not have to bring a two dollar fee for us to do that. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Letters of recommendation. Mr. Myers touched on this. It's very important to notify someone if they're going to be writing a letter for you. First of all, you ask them. You email them or speak to them in person. And I always feel like a follow-up email is helpful just because it shows this is when I sent this and asked this of you. Um, and just kindly ask, would you be able to write a recommendation for me? Um, because someone's going to be honest with you if they can't write a good recommendation for you and say, maybe it would be better if you ask someone else. Um, so ask them, email them, give them at least two weeks notice um, from the date of the, that you're um, needing that due so that they have time to write something quality for you. The same is going to be asked um, if a counselor would be asked to write a recommendation for you for some reason. Uh, we want to give the writer as much information as we can. You have given us those blue forms this morning. Those are so helpful. But remember, your teacher doesn't have that. So that information, if you even take a picture of it before you turn it into us front and back, could be very helpful to your, your teacher who's writing a recommendation for you too. And it may save you some time. Uh, in the long run also. So um, if you're asking the counselor, if, if the school that you're applying to specifically wants a recommendation from your school counselor, you need to email myself if I'm your counselor or Mr. Myers or whoever your counselor is and let them know that they're requiring a counselor recommendation. This is rare. Typically they're taking the teacher recommendation but we do have a few schools that occasionally do still require a counselor recommendation. And unfortunately, we don't know that on our end. It's only on your end that you know that. So um, please notify us if we're going to need to do that and give us those two weeks so that we have time to write something good for you guys. OK, so common application. Um, this is a platform. And there are over 800 colleges and universities um, throughout um, the United States, and I think there's some that are, it's becoming international also. Um, these schools, um, the, the goal of this is if you are applying to five schools, and they're all common app schools and belong to that platform, it saves you time, okay? You're not going through five separate websites putting in your name, your address, those things over and over and over again. You're doing that one time, and then the schools that the specific requirements that they have are added into that platform on tabs so that you can complete them. So if they do require you to write a, um, an essay, not all schools require that, but if they do, then that essay will be supplemented in in that common app and they can see that, okay? It saves you a lot of time. So if you, I just put some examples up here. I mean, UK, UD, Ohio State, Michigan, Miami, UC, Toledo, Bowling Green, Ohio University. These are all schools that belong to the Common App, but there are so many more, guys. So please check that out because that can definitely um, save you time. But it does take time to complete this application. So it's not something you're going to get done in an hour. It's something that you're going to create an account, go in, start to answer questions, take a break, you know what I mean, see what you need. Um, you definitely will need that transcript that's in front of you and that's why we're giving that to you. So you can use that um, to work off of as you work through that, that application. Um, but it's a wonderful thing. The schools that um, belong to Comment App, Mr. Myers talked about holistic review and that is what they use to decide your admission. Um, and again, it's electronic, um, and just please pay attention to email. And we'll talk a little bit about that and how you um, go through and, and designate people here in a second when we get to contacts. 
So this year, we're doing things differently. Um, or actually, we started this last year with our seniors last year. You will request your transcript electronically through a Google form. Mrs. Kurtz will be sharing that information and putting it out to you so that you have the link to fill out. And once you do that, that will signal us that we need to send for you. Um, my advice is do not ask for your transcript to be sent until you've actually done the application and hit submit. When you've done that, then go ahead and fill out that transcript request form, okay? And remember, it's only $2 if we're sending a paper copy electronically. Um, we do not, if we're doing it through Common App, we don't need the $2, or through something called Send You, then we don't have to have the $2 to do that, okay? She will be sharing that with you, I believe, on probably Monday night. We'll, we'll have that out to you. How to contact us. Um, most of you are great at emailing us if you need something. The only reason I put this back up here again is just to make sure if you are inputting our email address into an application, please make sure that you do it correctly. Um, there's been often times where a student will come down upset after a deadline and say, you didn't do what you were supposed to do, you didn't send my stuff. And then we go back and we look through and they've not put in the email address correctly so the information never gets to us. So it's really important that you make sure that you spell our names correctly um, in, in putting that information into the application so that we don't have any issues with that. Um, when you get to a certain tab on the common application, it will talk about something called FERPA, F-E-R-P-A, and that is just an information sharing and privacy act. And so you will make a decision on that, and once you see that after that, then you will be able to invite your recommenders and your counselor to um, add your transcript and do those things. So that's an important thing, you just make sure you know our email addresses, and if you have any questions, you know you can um, sign up and see us or come down and we'll talk to you about that. Signing up to see us is different this year. Um, you're not coming down in the office and writing your name on the sheet like you used to. Um, there are QR codes that are posted throughout the building. We've shared a link to a Google form so that you can fill that information out. And many of you have used it already. We've seen a lot of you um, using that, and we appreciate that. So you can use that, that, that QR code and do that, um, or you can just work through the link that we um, gave you and that's on Google Classroom also. Okay, NCAA eligibility. Not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but just wanna touch on, if you are looking at a Division I or II school, we started talking about this when you were coming in from the eighth grade. There is coursework, and there is a certain specific um, courses that are NCAA courses, and then you have to also meet the ACT criteria and the GPA, the core GPA criteria for that. So if you are potentially talking to someone right now about this for Division I or Division II, and you have not done that, you are behind and you need to see us about that, okay, and make sure that you're registered. And even if you are registered, we highly recommend that you do that NCAA worksheet to check where your core GPA is for yourself, and we can give you information on that if you would, if you would come down. Okay, so this is a huge topic, and I don't know if that's, this has been a topic in your home um, with your families, but scholarships. Um, paying for school is typically one of the number one concerns in our senior families as we transition because it is so expensive guys it's a huge cost so um, we want to get money for you in any way that we can um, please read the guidance newsletter every month mrs kurtz produces it it's wonderful and she shares it with you i think she usually puts it put the notice out on social media but also um, send something sometimes to your school email, so please pay attention to that. And then it's also on our website here at the high school. So as we go starting into these next months, you will see the amount of scholarships in that newsletter just build. There'll be more and more and more. And you have to read through them. Some of them will not apply to you at all, um, but some of them potentially could. And so please pay attention and apply to those um, because any time that you can get any money for school, 
is worth it um, and worth your time filling out those applications. There are also um, national web like websites that you can look at to look at different scholarships that are available um, to see all the options. We've listed some of those um, some of those websites that you can look at on your PowerPoint. I do want to point out it's your choice whether you look at these and use these um, platforms in order to access scholarships because that is sharing information about you. So that's your own personal choice whether you want to do that. I've had students do it and I've had students receive scholarship money. And I've had other students look at it and say, uh, I'm not really comfortable, I don't want to be marketed to, so I'm just going to go with the other options that we have that are a little safer. And we'll talk about those here in a second. So that is completely up to you, but those are out there and um, we do have students that receive money from them. So take a look at those different options. You'll share information about yourself, and then they will come back and let you know what scholarships you're eligible to apply for then. So the ones that don't share your information are the ones we're gonna kind of talk about here. Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship. So we've talked about some of the bigger ones on the last slide, like national. Now we're getting down to local, where you have a better chance of getting money. So the Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program is only for our county, um, and that will open up um, toward the springtime. We'll give you more information about this in December, um, but you will fill out the application, and the only other requirement is that you provide your ACT score, and that you also give um, an acceptance letter for where you want to attend school or where you have applied, and then that you do the FAFSA, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, the free application for federal student aid. So that's all you have to have to be considered for the Dayton Montgomery County, okay? So they will evaluate the cost of attendance of the school you're going to, and they will evaluate your family's financial situation, and they will decide whether you get money toward the Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship. Some students get the full amount, um, which is, I believe, I want to say, was it, Susan, do you remember the full amount last year? For, was it a thousand? Okay, full amount was a thousand, and then if you have a school that's, um, maybe the cost is a little bit less, so Sinclair costs less than, than other colleges, then you get a lesser amount, but still, it's free money and you don't have to pay it back. That's a good thing. Um, they also have foundation scholarships and managed scholarships that we will provide information on that have more specific criteria than the top one there, which is the the, the, the Dayton Scholarship Program. Some important ones are that are Miamisburg scholarships. This is where most of our students get the bulk of their money. Okay, we have, and, and this is you don't realize this because you don't know what other schools do in other areas around us, but we have one of the um, most generous cities that have these type of scholarships. Other schools, they don't have this for their students, and their, their, their community doesn't do this for their students. So we have a large amount of scholarships that are given out to our students just here at the high school. You are the only ones eligible to apply for it, and we will do that and talk more about that in December. Examples of some of the Miamisburg scholarships are the local, like the PTO, like from your elementary school that you attended, if you attended Miamisburg. Um, there are athletic ones. There are memorial scholarships for students who have attended here and their families create a memorial scholarship for them. So there are so many and we will provide information on each of those, how, what the criteria are and how to apply. We'll do that in December. So we will bring that and give that to you. You just need to be knowing that that's coming in December time. And sometimes parents will ask, maybe if you've had an older sibling and they're like, wait, aren't we supposed to be talking about scholarships? Sometimes you just let them know that information will come out in December, okay? So FAFSA. Um, this is the free application for federal student aid that I said. If you have had an older sibling and they've gone to college, then your mom and dad are probably familiar with this. If you are maybe the first in your family to go to college, um, then this is something new. And it opens up on October 1st for 
you to apply to. Um, I strongly recommend that you fill it out. Um, many colleges will not consider you for their scholarships unless you have filled it out. Um, it also can tell your eligibility for grants, um, which are free money. So grants are free money that you don't have to pay back in scholarships. So please, you need to complete the FAFSA if you are going to go to college next year. It doesn't matter what school you are going to, any college or university, you should complete the FAFSA. Even some of the technical programs, um, Hobart, for example, that we were talking about earlier, the Weldon's Welding School, they still complete the FAFSA. Um, so this is a very important document, um, and we're going to provide more information to you and to your parents through a um, pre-recorded meeting that we will be doing. Typically, we did this meeting with parents and students in the Commons in October. But because of the way the situation is this year with the pandemic, we will be doing a pre-recorded meeting and we will um, bring that information to you and your parents that you can watch at your convenience, okay? And we'll let you know as we, can, as we get closer to when we release it. Go ahead and look in that packet and grab that um, that bookmark if you don't mind. Okay, so you can go ahead now um, and you're able to apply for the FAFSA ID, the FSA ID. Um, and this is something that you have to use for that financial aid that you fill out. Your parents have to have one, one of them, and you have to have one. Okay, so you can go ahead and get that ready now so that when it does come to be October 1st, if you want to start filling it out on October 1st at midnight, then or one of one, then you're you're more than welcome to. But you have to have that done prior to. So this walks you through some of those steps until we can um, get that meeting information out to you, and it's very helpful. There's a couple things I do want to um, point out about the FAFSA, um, and number one is that the key word here is free. You are filling this out for free. You are not to pay any money to fill out the FAFSA. Um, and I always put this up here because if you go in and you just put F-A-F-S-A -F and Google it, there will be lots of websites that are trying to have fill out the information for you. So they're gonna take it, you're gonna type it in, and then they're gonna transfer it over into the form for you and charge it with fee. You don't need that. You just need to go on the, um, the free website and the one that we provided to you and maybe we find just please don't I don't want you guys to get scammed or have to pay for something that's free. Please if you're not signed up do follow us on Instagram if you I know many of you signed up last year but if you haven't we're at MBURG Vikings um, and follow us because we will provide lots of information to you in that way. Um, throughout the year, so it's important to follow. Okay. Any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay. What I would like is if you are finished with your blue sheet and you're done, then you will leave that there and you can go to second period. If you are not finished, please. Stay and finish that and then get that submitted. And again, I said, if you.